China could be using cars and refrigerators to spy on people. A new report details how Chinese manufactured microchips and those items pose a threat to national security in the U.K. But there's also a potential for Chinese spying and security concerns right here in the U.S. The report warns that Beijing can use data collected and transmitted from those devices to track people. Let's bring in the author of the report, Charles Parton. Charles, just walk us through how the spying works. Well, these um, devices are a bit like, in many ways, like a cellular phone, but data goes uh, in, in and out of them. And it's not just in, in terms of the um, spying, which you uh, talked about, but also that they are crucial to industrial processes, um, logistics, transport, cars, and many other things. So they're an integral and um, becoming a really vital part of our, our modern life. Uh, and, and the threat is that it's not just that China will egress data out of it about in, individuals, uh, and that might be important if these are sensitive government officials or, or Hong Kong people or Uyghurs or whatever. But more importantly, I think, is, is the dependency that the three Chinese companies are uh, creating, because China's aim is to ensure that they get a complete monopoly over the provision of these modules. And that would create dependency of, of our countries and prejudice our security and our, and our values and, and our long-term economic prosperity. And, and finally, it's possible because these devices are um, programmable, I mean, they, they send data in, they send data out, you, you update them with software, et cetera. Um, you can quite easily actually identify where these, these are without too much effort. Uh, and you can then start messing around with them. Uh, and potentially, for instance, let me just give you a quick example. I mean, we all have smart meters in our house, and that's great because we don't have to report to the electricity company um, what, what, what the readings are every, every month. But these smart meters are also used by companies to ensure that the, um, the grid works properly. Now, if you interfere with those smart meters at, at a crucial time, let's say when electricity uh, demand is very high, and you could do, you can identify each of these smart meters individually from Beijing. Right. Um, you mm -hmm. could cause real havoc in, in the grid and, and maybe blackouts, etc. So it's not just right. the spying, it, it's greater dependencies. That's right. So we're talking about data collection and then also the ability to geolocate. So how does this threat extend to U.S. consumers? Well, I think it's no different from U.S. consumers than it would be any, anywhere else in, in the world. I mean, increasingly, for instance, cars are, are, are using these um, modules. Um, and, and uh, you know, you, you, you might be, for instance, um, working for a sensitive government department in the U.S. And if your car is always parked in a certain car park in Langley, well, guess you where you work. And, and more to the point than that, not just that you're a CIA officer, but you can be followed around. Uh, where your car goes uh, throughout throughout its day and, and, and etc. So um, it really is, I think, um, a, a potentially a very great threat in a whole range of, uh, of ways. Um, for uses. sure, right? Now, let me ask you: We're talking about data collection. So, what does that look like? Does it go beyond identity theft? Um, yes, I mean, it's, these devices are designed to um, you know, improve the performance of whatever they're in. So that might be a car, but it also might be an industrial process, or it might be in a traffic light system or a traffic system in, in, a, in, in, a, uh, in a city. So there's a vast amount of data that's going to and from these devices. They interact with each other as well without human intervention. Um, and so they are very controlling of a whole load of processes. Uh, so so uh, you know, a very serious um, matter. And we are, I think, totally unaware of this because most politicians that I've spoken to don't know what a cellular module is. They've never heard of the three Chinese companies. And uh, I dare say most of your listeners won't have heard of Quetel, Fibercom, possibly China Mobile, they might have done. Um, but in, in many ways, this is a bigger threat as Huawei and, and ZTE, which they probably have heard of. So just to be clear, how can the data be used against you? Well, it, 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 as an individual, it may or may not matter to you too much, depending on what you do. But you can build up a very um, clear picture of someone's lifestyle. But as I've said, I think the, the greater threat is from um, you know, to, to our, our processes. So I mean, again, let me just give you a, a, another example. I mean, you have a company in the States which has um, got a research 
contract with with Quectel, and I, I presume eventually will lead to a production contract. This this company produces. 75% of your police born body cameras. Now, if all the data from those cameras is going back to China, I would suggest that's quite a big threat to you. It may not matter so much for the average policeman right. you know, on the streets of Baltimore, but right. if it's a policeman in the White House or Defense Department or somewhere, then I think you've got to be quite worried. Yeah, it's not just the individual, but it's the collective impact of all of that data. Charles Parton, thank you. Pleasure.